Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So in this video I'm going to be analyzing a game between Magnus Carlsen, the current world champion, and Wouter Spellman, a Dutch grandmaster. So I hope Spellman is the correct pronunciation because I'm going to be using it throughout the whole video. So yeah, this is a game actually from the Proches League, which uh, actually first started this year in 2018. And this is a game actually from fourth round, which was played in February. So this was actually a game suggested to me by a subscriber. As I said, you can, uh, by writing in the comments, uh, hashtag game of the day, suggest um, some kind of games that you want me to analyze. And this is actually the first uh, type of video where I'm going to be analyzing a game uh, suggested to me by a subscriber. So the subscriber is Eduardo Edward Sweet. So thank you for that. I really enjoy this game and I hope uh, you all will enjoy my analysis of it. So let's go into it. We have, uh, so Magnus is white, he's playing against Spellman who, Spellman who is black and we have a Sicilian game. Uh, knight to f3 and e6, so nothing too, uh, too uh, strange here. And now, as you all know, uh, you who constantly play Sicilian, uh, d4, a normal move here. But Carlsen decided to play d3. So uh, probably the um, decision behind this is doesn't want to go into the main line uh, because in Proces League they play rapid chess and maybe he wants to try and maybe catch his opponent of guard or something with the move such as d3. It is a common move in a close Sicilian, but yeah, usually players play d4. But nevertheless, it's not a bad move. It just says that he doesn't want to go into the main line. So now they continue with the development. And one thing I want to say on these types of uh, close Sicilians, Sicilians with d3, uh, a standard thing is to play g3, bishop g2, go castles on this side. And uh, the play is usually on both sides of the board. Even if uh, white goes to this side uh, to castle, he tends to attack on the king side. And also he needs to watch out for the center. So Carlsen plays g3 and we have d5. So black decided to establish his dominance and presence in the center by playing d5. And he wants to, uh, because white didn't uh, uh, push the pawns and uh, gain much space in the center. So black wants to do it. So now we have uh, queen to e2 first. Because if takes takes, then the queen would be exchanged, and uh, Carlson doesn't want to do that. We have knight from g2 e7. So normal development moves: bishop to g2 and g6. So there will be a lot of fianchettoing uh, in this game, and also it is a common thing in this opening: putting the bishops on g2, uh, g7, g2, and b7. That's pretty standard stuff. And now we have h4, probably something that you wouldn't play in a classical game, but. If uh, black doesn't address it, you push h5 and open up the h file so there is no kingside castle. Or if it is, you have some th serious threats on the h file. But Spellman plays h5 and we have ca castles by Magnus. Bishop to g7 and now this bishop is looking really good on this open uh, diagonal. e5 by Magnus. So yeah. Immediately Magnus uh, addresses this and wants to cancel out this bishop, but on the other hand uh, he leaves this a really nice square for this knight, he can jump from f5. And that's what Spellman does, knight to f5. And now there is actually uh, a threat of going immediately to d4, and if this knight would be on d4 then it would be a, a great threat and you definitely don't want to allow this, you play c3. Also a common move in these types of uh, openings the thing is, uh, on the other hand, that uh, now you left this d pawn on d3. So now if uh, black manages to push d4, you will have for the rest of the game a weak d3 pawn. Something that black can take advantage of. But um, that is something that you, like, say, give, like you can say, give one of the weaknesses, but you're working for some other plans during the game. b6. So trying to put the bishop on b7 or a6 and the bishop to g5. Exploiting the fact that the bishop is on this side and that dark squares are wide open. So yeah, the bishop can develop with tempo here and queen has to move to c7. Uh, you don't want to play f6 in this position because after these exchanges, um, black is left with the e6 and g6 pawns, which look uh, really weak. And yeah, white is better in this position. So... A better is to move the queen and Spellman moved to c7, which is okay. 
rook to e1 defending because the queen was also attacking this pawn there are three attackers and three defenders and now it's time to see what you want to do bishop to a6 a good move since it's preventing pushing of the d4 and uh, this is something that probably white would want to do to further establish uh, the presence in the center uh, have a nice point pawn chain and uh, yeah having much more space than black uh, a4 um, with an idea that so carlson has an idea uh, to put the knight to a3 and then maybe to b5 and we have knight to h6 so the plan is to put the knight on g4 and add one more attacker to the e5 square um, maybe in this position a bit too slow so my my preference would have been uh, first to go castle because white is also going castle on king side and uh, yeah it, it should be pretty safe up there and then see after white plays something what you should do knight to a3 and now knight to g4 so now in this position yeah it's kind of it's kind of strange to me that um, uh, magnus didn't uh, continue with his with his idea but uh, yeah he probably calculated it but uh, in the end uh, there are a lot of things to consider so let me just show you probably so the best move here is knight to b5 and you want to take this knight because if you move the queen somewhere so not definitely d8 for example queen to d7 you have knight to d6 check uh, king has to move and after bishop to f4 this knight is safe and he is in enemy's territory so yeah it is a problem always for black because now he has uh, yeah less space to develop his pieces and uh, this that is the main reason why you want to take this knight on b5 and after bishop takes and a takes uh taking on the e5 isn't an option isn't a good option so you should play knight to e7 but if you for example take on e5 we have knight takes c5 and after for example if queen takes c5 we have um uh, queen to f3 now the queen moves uh, out of the way and the rook is attacking the queen and after the queen moves for example to d6 you have simple queen takes on d5 because as i said previously probably it should have been better to go castle right away because now there are these kinds of threats uh, here um, even after those exchanges the, the rook has to move somewhere um i don't know for example b8 then you have this check king has to move to f8 and then also this pawn is falling yeah black position is falling apart so there aren't any actually better moves uh, but probably carlson was calculating this bishop takes on e5 now the best move is to play f3 and after bishop to g3 and f takes on g4 uh, yeah then, then you go in a lot of complications because first bishop takes on e1 and you have to take on d5 in order to stay better uh, now still there is a king on e8 and the rook is attacked but there is also this queen here king has to move and yeah in in the end in this position yeah black has to play something like rook b8 then once again we have bishop to c6 king moves and queen takes on e1 so in this position uh white is finally better he has uh, two bishops for um for a rook but once again this pawn will fall uh white doesn't really care for this pawn but uh, also the position of black isn't that good so yeah uh white white could have been much better here just by playing knight to b5 of course you don't have to take on e7 you should play knight to e7 but even after that white is better but uh, Carlson decided to not to play knight to b5 even though I think uh, that was his an initial initial idea when he was playing a4 and knight to a3 he decided to play bishop to a4 so this pawn was attacked so you defend it once more and now we have castles by black so he prevents all these ideas and we have bishop to h3 so he wants to remove the attacker of this pawn queen to d7 and now spellman is actually preparing to push d4 and uh, that would be a really good thing to do because uh, after you play d4 as i've said uh, d3 left uh, this pawn is always here and he is a weak pawn and uh, then after that in some still middle game going to the end game you can play against this pawn as a weakness on the white side when the position opens up a little bit and now we have a uh, knight to c2 so instead of going to b5 carlson decided to play on c2 probably yeah to attack once more here and now nevertheless we have d4 because uh, yeah black can just play it 
and we have c4 in order to defend the d5 square of course you have to you have to acknowledge all the all the all the weaknesses in the position if uh, for example this knight from e7 to would come to d5 from e7 then yeah so something like this it would be a very strong knight attacking this bishop also pressuring the c3 c3 pawn and also yeah there are some threats when bishop to b7 queen to c5 yeah there are a lot of threats and you have to take in account all of them and playing c4 is an okay move here but as i've said there is always this d3 pawn which will be a problem and now bishop to b7 so in this situation as the black have uh, established this pawn chain uh, on the dark square now it's a very good move to bring this bishop back to b7 because this bishop on this di diagonal is going to be great now i would expect from a world champion to play something like uh, bishop to g2 at some point but he decided to play bishop to g4 so i can maybe understand that, that there there could be some options here when uh, so example h takes on g4 and knight to h2 but which was played then maybe you can have some kind of attack on the king side but um, when i'm looking at position from the black perspective uh, having this bishop on b7 and this queen really close yeah it's uh, really difficult to imagine why did white uh, give up a light square bishop because this light square bishop now becomes a really really strong piece even better than a rook so so yeah uh, in this position i'm not really sure why magnus uh, captured on g4 but maybe yeah it is like that in rapid chess so in classical i really doubted that he would that he would do it but maybe he saw something maybe working on time or something like that we have knight to e5 so now spellman uh, wants to exploit this uh the strength so exploit the weaknesses of the light squares of uh, magnus and uh, yeah power up this bishop by opening this diagonal and using it uh, yeah in the combination with the queen to thread checkmates and some other things so sacrificing the knight a uh, pretty de decent move here so nothing is lost for spellman uh, a sacrifice is good bishop takes on e5 and now we have queen to c6 so immediately going on this diagonal threatening on g2 and h1 checkmate we have f3 uh, stopping that other move could have been queen to e4 but carlson decides to do this because uh, after g takes f3 and queen to f2 now black is kind of blocked by its own pawn but then again yeah the queen is stuck here because when she moves first chance he she gets uh black gets he will push f2 and immediately release this dragon and the queen in front of him so yeah now black definitely doesn't want to give up his other bishop he plays f6 and now there are two options uh, first you can play bishop to f4 but after e5 and bishop to d2 you have f5 and now we have e4 in the so e4 in the next move and then after exchanges even e3 yeah black is coming with the pawns the position will open up and as i said these two pieces will become alive and it's a much better position for black even though he he is uh he pees down so instead instead of that uh, magnus decided to play bishop takes on d4 and after c takes on d4 and knight takes on d4 now he has some counterplay so he gave up a piece back but still black has a bishop pair now we have queen to d7 and knight to e6 so this is all forced rook goes to e8 and uh, knight captures on g7 king captures on g7 and okay so magnus in the end uh, managed to recover from this position a little bit um he gave up the piece back and he equalized in material but then again there are threats on both sides of the board and now we again we are back in the game uh, of course he plays d4 because this d d3 pawn was attacked and now he is safe and now yeah there is a question what you should do spellman plays rook to e2 because uh, once again he wants to uh, uh yeah he wants uh, magnus to capture this rook so that he can capture with the pawn and yeah essentially free up this diagonal uh, if magnus wouldn't take then just queen to d4 and this is like uh, crazy fast checkmate king to h1 f2 and everything falls apart on white side so uh, you have to take rook takes on e2 and f takes on e2 and now carlson played uh, rook to e1 but this wasn't necessarily the best move because he could have played d5 and kind of blocked this bishop 
for the rest of the game because you cannot even attack c4 with some kind of a tempo in order to crush this pawn chain because there is also a b3 pawn there so yeah this will this would resolve uh, black's problems for the rest of the game regarding this bishop but you know you have rook to e8 but there is no time to actually push you can play rook to e1 in the next move but Carlson decided to play that and now we have queen to c6 with a tempo attacking this pawn and also threatening checkmate you have to play d5 in order to prevent it and now queen to c4 and in this position uh, Carlson actually made a final mistake probably I would assume already in this move before he was in time trouble so he had to play really fast uh, the thing is the best move here is to capture with the queen and after queen takes on d5 you have queen e7 king has to go on g8 and you exchange queens you go into a drawn end game and yeah then or you can still play but uh, this was the best chance for magnus uh, you also cannot hide with the king because yeah with the simple three moves this is a checkmate for white so yeah um, you have to go to g8 but instead of all of that uh, magnus captured with the rook and now queen to d5 and you don't have those threats of, ex of exchanging the queens and there is a still threat from black to actually checkmate on h1 there is a rook e7 check king to g8 and now probably the best move is to capture the bishop and finally get rid of that bishop uh, which has been bothering you the whole game but no carlson <laughs> decided to play king to f1 um don't yeah don't be missed so uh, i don't want to confuse you or anything even after magnus capture, captures this bishop he is still in a losing position but he wants to try something else first there was a repetition move so repetition of moves check king goes back to g1 bishop b7 once again king to f1 Carlsen didn't capture on b7 and now rook to c8 and in this position actually Carlsen could have resigned the game but uh, yeah he decided to continue you cannot uh, really defend against all of these threats uh, there is a h1 threat there is a rook c1 threat so rook to e1 was played we have queen to h1 king to e2 has to be played king to e2 and uh, rook to c2 check now when the king moves you will capture the bishop king to d3 was played and now yeah just capture the queen uh no yeah if a king moves then you would capture the queen so the queen was captured rook captures on h1 and you have bishop captures on h1 so the queen was defended and in the end yeah in this position magnus resigned the game so yeah uh, a world champion losing a game you don't see that every day um so yeah this was a rapid uh, chess but nevertheless big props to mr spellman a very nice game exploiting the weaknesses and using this light square bishop uh, in a really great way uh, carlson missed a couple of things also as i said if he played that knight to not knight to b5 yeah probably could have ended up in a better position but instead of that then he gave up his light square bishop okay my thinking is that that wasn't the best move but uh, yeah in the end uh, light square bishop of black proved to be a really strong piece so yeah this is pretty much it as i've said on the beginning of the video this was a suggestion from a subscriber so if you maybe have some games that you would like me to analyze please post it down in, in the comments down below i would be glad to do so and yeah and th that is pretty much it for this video i would like to thank you for watching it and i will see you next time